So again, welcome to uh, the Tuesday evening uh, Tech Deacons Roundtable. It's great to see some folks. Seeing that we are a small gathering uh, this evening, um, that um, you know this uh, time space allows us to um, to introduce ourselves and because uh, I'm seeing uh, some new folk here um, to introduce themselves to the group. Um, e, since you're on um, on the top of my screen at least, uh, would you mind beginning? Sure. Um, I'm the pastor of First Congregational Church in Griswold. We're on the far eastern side, um, much closer to Rhode Island than pretty much anywhere else. Um, we, uh, prior to the pandemic, we were streaming the sermon only to a closed church group on Facebook. Uh, we didn't have the nerve to go out into the ravages of, of all of Facebook. So we were doing that just with my phone sitting on the pulpit, but uh, um, then the pandemic forced us into to going uh, live on, on, we, on Facebook Live. We have now, um, we went in person for a while in the summer and then mm -hmm. um, in December we stopped and we're still just online for I'm not sure how long. Um, <clears throat> while we were in person, I did kind of a hybrid. I did Zoom and then I was the only one on Zoom and I streamed it to Facebook Live and everybody in the church, they watched it on Facebook Live. And mm -hmm. uh, so I pretty much just sit with my computer in front of me and, and uh, whatever sits in front of my computer is what they see at home. I do a PowerPoint and uh, and that, so we're we're learning, and we would like to uh, branch out. I would I would really like to end up with a tech person that would do that part of it for me on, mm -hmm. so especially once, whenever that happens, that we're back in person. That I don't want to give up the the streaming online. I don't want to ever give up that presence. Um, but I'd like to not have to keep doing it, doing the service with my computer in front of me. If so, that that's my end goal is to get there. Well, mm -hmm. that's my so first, to, for first goal. So, yeah. so to be able to be present with those in the sanctuary, but also not look beyond the camera. Well, and, and also have a camera with the person and a, in a, their own computer and, and they be, mm -hmm. they could, you know, the organist could be seen, you know, you could see a lot more than right. just what's sitting in front of my computer. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Edie. Larry, would you care to introduce yourself and uh, say where your church is from and what? your digital ministry is. I believe you're muted. Do you want to unmute yourself? Oh, I believe you're still you're still muted, uh, Larry. So you go to the lower lower left hand corner. And just click. there you go. I'm Larry Harris uh, from the Wilbraham United Church, and I'm a uh, retired uh, electronics engineer, uh, worked for Digital Equipment, Compaq, and Hewlett Packard for uh, about a little over 20 years. Uh, our church uh, has been mostly uh, doing Zoom and uh, Facebook. So one of our members, uh, Deb Trimble, basically took it upon herself to uh, self-teach herself uh, how to do the uh, streaming for Facebook. And uh, uh, I've helped a little bit with the uh, Zoom uh, transmissions. But right now we're doing the uh, Sunday morning service on Facebook. Uh, we're doing a, uh, a Bible study uh, on uh, 
Facebook and uh, our pastor uh, Chip Hurd is doing a Bible study on Zoom. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you, Larry. So basically, I've been you know trying to help uh, uh, Deb and, and Chip asked me to uh, try to to uh, spec out and price out a uh, streaming uh, t you know television system and with Eric's help we've you know started doing that we've uh, pretty much got it priced out and now we're trying to evaluate whether we can afford it mm -hmm. but I believe that we will probably continue to do uh, streaming TV in some form even when we get get back into the uh, congregation right thank you larry catherine well hello it's my first time okay. here so i don't know really what to expect but i'm kind of interested to hear what everybody has to say um i'm from first congregational in east long meadow mass uh western mass uh we started out on zoom did quite well on Zoom, um, just sent out the link to all of our congregation. And then we ventured out into Facebook Live land. We have a GoPro that's being used to stream our services. And we just recently, I think just in the last week or two, we just purchased a new system to help us expand our technology horizons at our, our church. And we went to a audio tech company and priced out, you know, cameras and audio system and the whole rigmarole. And we are currently waiting to get that installed. Um, they're going to have cameras from the back be able to zoom in so that we can really get a better picture because that's something that's been a problem. Um, we also do what we call kindred groups, which is like small group Bible studies together on Zoom. Um, it's been a great socializing tool for us. Um, so as far as I know, that's like the quick version of what what's going on with us. Thank you, Catherine. Sam, do you care to share? I would love to care to share. Pastor Edie and our organist have done an amazing thing that they didn't know hope that they could do it through this mm. and we've had worship and wonderful services to do that i am again the head deacon with pastor Edie. just started this term and i would love to learn like we just heard about how to do this without a cell phone because that's mm -hmm. how we do everything on a cell phone or dropbox Mm -hmm. and or my laptop and the first time that I had to do a reading I had no idea what to do and I googled it figured out that I had to turn my camera sideways to make a better picture and yep. the people are very happy you know that 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 see us online and it's amazing how many more people that are online to watch us than are ever in the sanctuary right. to do that. It's amazing to hear that. And we want to keep that, but we want to make it more exciting. Thank you. No, you thank you, Sam. Excited to build. <clears throat> you told me the first step was to build a team. Well, here, here's my first member of my there team. There you go. Congratulations. I am so excited. I talked about going <laughs> wonderful. to school all day at work. I said, I'm going oh, wonderful. to school tonight. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling blessed. Thank you so much. I'm, I am blessed. Thank you. Rich, would you care to introduce yourself in your church? Sure. I'm uh, Rich Harrington. I'm with the Center Congregational Church in Manchester been there about a year 
Before that, I was about 30 plus years in Massachusetts at uh, uh, Congregational Church of Littleton. Uh, I, we moved down here for my, my kid's son to be closer to the kids and we found this church and pretty shortly the pandemic came in and we were offered to, wanted to offer some of our skills. I've been in uh, video transport and you know, manufacturing as a VP of manufacturing engineering for about uh, 15 years there and retired. So I came to bring some of my skills over. The infrastructure at the center is not very good for internet. Um, they only had uh, a, a DSL line that was capable of three megabits down and only a half a megabit up. So that mm. caused us with issues with connections and transports. Uh, our Pastor Joyce has actually been the driver to get most of the uh, video going right now. You know, she's running out of her laptop, uh, originally running out of her house, and then was able to move back into the church into one of our smaller uh, rooms to make it more feel more um, reverent or church intimates in the background and stuff. And so that's worked out well for us. But uh, there is no uh, internet distributed through the church. So one of the problems is the sanctuary itself doesn't have access to internet. So we are in the process of upgrading our internet. And in today we just installed our Cox business uh, connections. And we now start working on building our routers and switches and getting wire distributed and our wireless access points put up. And then we're looking at uh, cameras uh, is our next phase. And that's, I, I have some advantage in that the people in Littleton have already gone through that. And I've been in contact with them and saw what they were doing. So I have some resources there to see what worked and what didn't work for them. Um, but uh, here I have a, I'm part of a, an ad hoc committee. So I have two other members to help me work with that. And then working with Pastor Joyce and some others. Uh, right now they're doing uh, Zoom with uh, feed out to uh, Facebook. And then they also do a, uh, right now they're doing a book study before they were doing uh, get together on Tuesdays, but book study is what they're doing now. And so that's, uh, been working out pretty well for us at this point. And we definitely want to try and figure out uh, how we can make this happen when we get to come back and, um, and stay connected because it, it appears that that's uh, what we need to do. And one of the problems that uh, Central has is it's a huge church, you know, popular, you know, one time must have had at least 500 members. It now sits considerably less than that at worship. You know, that probably, you know, before the pandemic was probably sitting right around 110, you know, in, the, in the, that massive sanctuary. But one of the things is it's sort of landlocked in that it doesn't have a lot of parking available to it. They're in the middle of downtown. So they have an arrangement. They're sitting right next to the uh, town hall. So they share that parking lot with them. Uh, so we're, we're anticipating to, to expand our ministry. We should do this through video because we're not going to be able to bring really a lot more people into the building at this point. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rich. Yep. Elamina, welcome. Welcome. Would you mind uh, sharing uh, who you are and uh, where your church is located? Yeah, I'm Reverend Philomena. I'm the pastor at First Congregational Church in Wareham. And this is my first time. So I wanted to do a look-see before I bring my people on um, and know what it is that I'm inviting them to. Sure thing. What, what else? No. Uh, are you currently, uh, uh, what type of digital ministry are you connected with? Are you... Uh, um, do you do you uh, does your church meet and gather on Zoom or uh, do you do you uh, okay. meet on uh, do you broadcast out on or uh, offer worship on Facebook? Okay, so we're we're basically a Zoom church 
and mm -hmm. on the first Sundays of the month, we're just starting that now, we are a drive-in church. So, we, oh, nice. so at Christmas Eve, um, we, we'd been doing Zoom, but I thought, oh, it's Christmas Eve. Maybe I could give my people something a little bit more than, mm -hmm. um, you know, Hollywood Squares for Christmas Eve. So I bought the um, transmitter and all of that. It's not terribly expensive. It's under $200 for what we got. And it was perfect. Our radio station was 97.7 FM. And um, everybody could hear clearly. We did an abbreviated lessons and carols. So instead of the nine lessons, we had five lessons and, and it worked mm. perfectly. So somebody a few weeks ago said, well, why don't we do that on communion Sundays? So that's what we're doing. But we, um, like Rich who just spoke, our sanctuary, we don't have internet. So um, I've been busy searching around for, for funding. And um, so I, I did receive a technology grant from a private source outside of the denomination. So that was $1,500. I got 500 from somebody else. And we're looking to get, um, you know, cameras and all that kind of stuff. But I think for me, it's, um, it's more than, you know, I think our, our strategy is a little bit broader than just focusing on worship and um, so we're really starting to think about what, what do we need if we wanted to have an online campus, a digital, you know, yeah. So that's kind of the, the route we're taking. And maybe um, after Easter or by Pentecost to, to, to maybe, yeah. So that's what we're planning. But um, so we do have a three member um, computer digital committee. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to convince them two of them are in Florida, one's in Maine. But hey, we got what we're doing now. It doesn't matter. You don't need to be here. Um, so, so this is all very exciting. I'm looking forward to it seeing how it unfolds and grows. Mm -hmm. And I think you bring up a good point. Um, so often we focus on, um, you know, how do we get the word out on Sunday? You know, um, and in our minds, we can craft, you know, what that looks like. Uh, but as Philomena said, you know, uh, digital ministry uh, goes beyond that. Uh, I'm, for example, I'm in my husband's church in a prayer room that they set aside here, you know, at his church in, in, in Summersville, Connecticut. Um, that was be, it was going to be used um, for a uh, prayer room for uh, for just ad hoc meetings and that sort of thing and for prayer um, uh, and uh, they were um, still looking to go uh, in the direction of um, you know uh, vertical vertical video mm -hmm. uh, video that would be um, that would be shared on um, on uh, you know on the mobile platforms you know and and short and short video, very short, um, uh, short form video. So yeah, you know, thank, thank you for mentioning that, uh, Philomena. Anita, would you like to share uh, something about your church, your ministry, and where you're all located? Hi, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yep. Hi, um, my name's Anita Dupa. I um, and I'm a trustee of the First Congregational Church in Rockland, Mass. We have been opened, we opened, reopened on August 2nd for indoor service. We remain open, and by God's grace, we haven't had a problem. 
we have a very large sanctuary and we do have plenty of distance between us. There aren't a whole a lot of people that go to service anymore, but um, the, the few that do um, enjoy being there and worshiping God in the sanctuary. So um, we're just going to leave it at that. Um, I have created a website for the church and uh, we have a, an ability to possibly do streaming service through the GoDaddy website that I used. And um, I'm looking at that possibility. Haven't even checked into the price yet, but we are looking at other options. We have a, a wonderful high school that has a broadcast station and they broadcast through the local station in town. And we're thinking about doing a, um, a service you know, through a, a webcam, you know, service. Mm -hmm. So other people can join in and be blessed. Mm. Um, I don't know what else, you know, we're hanging in there and uh, I hope all of you are, are well and, you know, we just all need to stay strong. Exactly. Okay. So um, if I can ask Anita, how did you uh, come to know, um, your the the crew that would be providing your broadcast services from from the high school how did you make that connection uh, we have a lady that is also one of the trustees and she actually worked at the high school for many years so she is the one that's going to be reaching out to them oh good so that's one of the uh, points that i uh that i you know i if I'm if I don't make it, I'm often reminded like how do how do we build a team? And um, you know, Anita shares one of the uh, uh, one of the possibilities, and that is to reach out to your local high schools, your local community colleges, to um, you know uh, nieces and nephews, to um, you know grandchildren, to children, to folks who you know in your uh, congregation who may have a passion and interest in technology and in, in broadcast. So that is uh, always a, you know, one of the avenues that I uh, strongly recommend uh, going, you know, pursuing first. Right. Uh, in the case of my, I'm sorry, go on. I, I agreed with you. I said right. Yeah, and uh, thank you. In the in the um, in the case of my husband's church, um, no one has served on the uh, streaming. Um, they call it a streaming team. Nobody has served on the streaming team uh, here in in Summersville who is over the age of 21. And that's because they, uh, they, the, we rely on folks uh, who are um, you know, high school age and um, you know, who as often as, you know, uh, as, uh, as we know, age out, you know, they go off to college. Um, so uh, there's a fair, there's a fair amount of, um, of uh, overlap, you know, with the, with the, with the members of the team. So this is your, uh, I can fill the whole, uh, you know, rest of our time together with uh, with things, but uh, this is your time to ask questions. Yeah. Uh, we're very laid back. Uh, there is no such thing as a um, as a uh, wrong question or a question that is um, that you should have known the answer to. Um, so we are we're here to help one another, and we're here to build community. Mm -hmm. So um, if you had, if you did bring something that is, uh, you know, of of uh, you know that's been on your mind and on your heart and and you and you got you stumped or you need some advice, um, I will be more than you know not only myself but folks who are also uh, with us this evening can can um, you know assist and and uh, share their experiences. Um, I do like to give a little nugget um, each um, each evening or morning depending on when you join us. Um, this pertains to copyright. I know copyright is a whole you know, other conversation that we could have, and uh, I encourage you to find on the SNEUCC website, there is a, a video under, if you go to the homepage and, and click on videos, there is a video for copyright and live streaming, uh, which, is a, um, a, uh, which uh, can be a good resource for you. Uh, in that um, video, I mentioned that uh, there is a fair amount of um, music that we would use uh, through Pilgrim Press, in other words, through the old Pilgrim hymnal or the um, New Century hymnal. 
that is in, that is incorporated in um, a service called One License. Um, lately, um, I got a tip from a, a person in a in a local church uh, in Enfield, Connecticut, or excuse me, in Longmeadow, Connecticut, or Longmeadow, Mass. I don't even know what state I'm in tonight. Um, that for $45 uh, flat rate, $45, uh, you can, um, you have uh, permission, you have to, again, you have to go to their website and buy now, but you can, um, you have permission to uh, live stream um, con the Concordia um, catalog. Uh, Concordia is the publishing company of the Lutheran Church. Um, most all of the music um, and, and pieces are covered um, and there is no reporting required. So if, you, um, if you're familiar with copyright um, procedure and, and best practices, um, when you sign up uh, for a one license subscription, uh, you um, are given a, you know, a streaming license. And again, if you already have a one license subscription that, um, and, you, and you're just starting off with um, live streaming, uh, either to Facebook or uh, YouTube or, or even on Zoom, um, you should purchase a podcasting component. And it's a, it's a, co a podcasting component that is added on to your um, yearly subscription. Just purchasing that license and then going each week, usually they, they recommend you go six weeks ahead um, in the in in your uh, liturgical, so go like you know take it you know uh, six weeks ahead from where you're at where we're at now. So it would be well into Lent, where you would be preparing what you would be um, uh, sharing online in terms of worship. Uh, so that was something you would be coordinating uh, with your um, organist choir director. But uh, what you what you need to do is you would need to report each week what you what you use. Um, that reporting makes it possible for the artists to get paid. So for us, at least, you know, for myself and for the conference, it's a justice issue that we do, um, you know, pro you know uh, properly report what we use and uh, in that so uh, the artists can, um, you know, get um, paid for their creative works. Um, there is another uh, music uh, publisher, Alfred Music, um, I don't know exactly what they um, what they cover, so you'd have to look it up. But they apparently have an agreement with Facebook that anything in the Alfred Music catalog, you are free to stream. So that is um, that is a couple of the um, you know uh, little tidbits that I uh, that I offer this evening, um, and that is. Uh, um, you know, from a friend in um, in Longmeadow. So I offer you that. Yes, Edie. Now we have the CCLI license mm -hmm. and the CCLI streaming license. Mm -hmm. Does that where you know? So how is that different? Yeah. Yeah. So CCLI, uh, if you so uh, CCLI covers more of contemporary music. Okay. Whereas one license would cover more choral. So there, there's the difference between the two. At one point, I believe you did not have to report for CCLI, but now you, you do have to do a monthly report as well. My experience has been they give you periods of time that they want you right. to report. And it's not necessarily all the time because um, right. I know I've, I've done that. Um, now, what if for the most part, we just have hymns. We right. don't have somebody singing, you know, because when you said for the artist to be paid, mm -hmm. I would say 99% of what, unless it's something off of YouTube, and then I have written permission from the people that created that, and I have a slide on my PowerPoint that gives them credit for that. Exactly. Um, I don't play anything. Um, right. So even though, even though you could make an argument that some of the music in our hymnal or in, in the uh, NCH is public domain, um, yeah. I'm not um, a music major. I'm, I don't even profess to know, you know, 
much of anything about um, about a choral ensemble, but I do know that there are different arrangements. So I believe that when you when you do report uh, each month, yeah. you're covered. You you cover yeah. that possibility of covering something that may be you know uh, under a different arrangement. Now, was uh, there something that covered both the Pilgrim and the and the um, uh, New Century hymnal? Yeah, one one license. One license does that. One license does. But not all of it is included. Um, I, I know there's a good percentage of it. Um, like now as an Episcopalian, um, I know that our publishing company, uh, Church Publishing, yeah, it's it's a hit or is really hit or miss. So I think, you know, as as a as the as a congregational church, uh, you know, um, and and um you know, within the UCC, I think we ha you have a better chance of making matches, you know, under one license. Yeah, especially out of the Pilgrim Hymnal. Right. I mean, <laughs> anyway, yeah, okay. So, Eric, uh, on the one license, I thought they had a streaming license. Is that what they call, what you're calling a podcast license? Podcast. A yeah, they, oh, okay. they, yeah, they have a streaming license, and, and, and they, they do call it a pod. At least they used to, they used to call it a podcasting license. Oh, uh, they still okay. might. Yeah, so streaming right, and or podcasting, and it's for for our local church was um, which is uh, St. Mark's in East Longmeadow. I believe it's uh, it's about a hundred dollars additional on top of the regular license. See, the the regular license allows you to reprint, so it gives you so there's different level. And if you go in, if you uh, watch the the video uh, copyright and live streaming, I I kind of go through this. The, the base license um, gives you um, the ability to reprint, you know, things that would be normally in a in the hymnal. It gives you the ability to reprint those in, you know, in a, in a paper bulletin. It also allows you to reprint lyrics if you're inserting, you know, if you're inserting uh, images um, like lower thirds in your worship service uh, with with uh, lyrics. It allows you to do that as well. That's on the base license. So it's kind of funny how that works. You know, you need the you need the you need the you know live streaming podcasting license to, you know, to podcast to you know to uh, to mm -hmm. live stream, yeah, uh, to those yeah. platforms. But the basic license allows you to reprint the uh, the lyrics yeah. online. Any other questions? Any. We must have, we must have uh, I, I snow have on question. our mind today. <laughs> What's that again? I have a question. I just sure. wanted to ask, uh, as people are buying equipment, are you just buying, you know, off the market, or are you are you using TechSoup? Um, where, where are people getting their equipment? So I often so it's it. Thank you again for uh, for bringing that up, Philomena. Uh, I, what I generally do is I, and I let other folks answer that. Um, I generally make recommendations. I often uh, refer folks to B and H. Um, I don't get a cut for you know I don't, I don't have any connection to B and H, but they're yeah, one of the larger what is B and H. Supply, uh, B and H uh, photo and video in Manhattan, okay. in New York City. Um, but um, can you explain TechSoup because TechSoup is actually a really good. Uh, resource. Yeah, well, Tech TechSoup is uh, this international company that nonprofits around the world register with, and you can buy really um, inexpensively um, the same things you would buy from anybody else. You have your laptops, you have uh, all that kind of stuff, yeah. but you need to like um, when you need to register your your church and upload mm -hmm. your um, tax exempt information, and then you you can start spending money. Yep. And and what TechSoup mainly covers is computer hardware mm -hmm. um, and um, software. Mm -hmm. So licenses of um, Microsoft Windows, um, Office, Photoshop, 
Uh, they have a pretty extensive catalog. You won't yeah. be getting, you know, uh, camera gear or no, switchers no, or things like that. Yeah. There. So it's soup, like I'm having my chowder. <laughs> Tech soup. Yep. And then the other thing that we've been looking into is um, at the top of the tech um, COVID season, Facebook started a um, faith-based initiative. And we just started looking in, into that to help us with some of the online groups that we want to start implementing through Facebook. So that, that might be something else that folks might want to look into. Uh, can you can you elaborate on that? Because I, as you're as you're mentioning um, and um, sharing, I'm taking notes because this is oh the, this... the faith based initiative. I first heard about it through Nona Jones. She's the director of it, and mm -hmm. Nona Jones is um, she co pastors a church in oh boy Northern Florida with with her husband. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, if you just go to faith-based, Facebook faith-based initiative, um, you'll get the whole thing. And Nona has, um, I, I call it a recipe book on, on how to do online church. And it's called... Um, digital ministry or something like that. I, I can't remember the exact title now. Okay. What I will do is I will, um, Philomena, if you can send what you have to me, I okay. will distribute. Thank, I will, I will. Maybe, you know. Maybe not tomorrow, because my day is full tomorrow, but by Friday. No, no worries. Okay. No, if I don't put a time on it, not gonna happen. I don't know about other people, but. <laughs> Yes, Edie. Um, so if we want, would it be wise maybe to, I say sit down with you, but probably by Zoom. Mm -hmm. What if we wanted to start having something, you know, that someone else ran, what's the basic stuff that you would start with that then you could build upon later as you got a little more so the, the, the basic um, system that I would, uh, basic components that I would um, suggest would be um, getting a, a camera on a tripod and mm -hmm. having the camera, um, you know, make sure that the camera has an HDMI, um, you know, video out. And uh, for that, I, um, oh, while I don't make a recommendation for cameras, and I, I can, I can uh, tell you uh, one off the top of my head now, but uh, if you look at uh, Beyond Webcams, the video on our um, website, sneucc.org forward slash um, video, you will uh, you'll see that there is a you know the, the requirements for you know for what I'm about to say. Oh. But uh, a camera that will allow you to set up um, a, a position you know in the church where you don't have the laptop right next right in front of the pulpit. Right. Or wherever you lead worship from, you know, right. um, so that way you're not you're 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 communicating and you're gathering you're in gathering with folks in the sanctuary, but you're also speaking to the camera. Okay. At the yeah. same time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the camera should have, and I I don't know how large your um, your sanctuary is, so uh, perhaps. Um, uh, perhaps we can get together on a, you can email, we can find a time to chat. Uh, yeah. But the idea of being that the camera would have enough of zoom, enough of, uh, of a uh, focal length where y you could have it, you know, in the back of the church or, you know, somewhere there where it's not obtrusive. Or up on the balcony. You could do it on the balcony. Yeah. You could place the camera on the balcony as well. Um, but what you're, uh, when you, when you, sh when, at least it was been, it's been my practice when I, um, when I shoot video, like for example, I'm on a, um, I'm on a, uh, I have a Sony uh, camcorder that I'm actually looking at right now with my laptop below. That's why you'll see me, you know, uh, looking at, um, and, um, you know, at both things. 
in any event, the camera that's look that's uh, shooting me now is slightly elevated. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what that does, it it oh. projects a sense of authority, and a, and a sense of connection more than anything, really. Mm -hmm. So I I oh, okay. I would try to avoid you know shooting video from oh. the top down. Okay. But rather you know either straight at or you know slightly elevated. Okay. So a good example of this would be uh, if you went to, I'll give you a web address, and for some of our um, folks who uh, who are regulars, uh, this will be a review, but it, uh, the, the web address is live, L-I-V-E, dot Somersville, that's S-O-M-E-R-S-V-I-L-L-E, U-C-C, dot org, and I'll put that in the chat. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to take up our time, but I, I was just sitting here thinking it might be good to start putting together a plan. So when I find this person either at Three Rivers or wherever, then maybe because I've had some people say, you know, they'd be willing to help financially. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's okay. been two years since we, you know, right now we just have a TV. Not mm -hmm. a real big TV, but not little either but sitting on the chancel we would mm -hmm. really love you know our first thing is to get rid of that and get some screens or whatever uh or tvs that are up mounted you know mm -hmm. but that's that's where we right. where we, that's part of a larger picture so you're going right. from you know yeah. you know taking your first step to you know yeah running you know running a sprint um yeah, yeah. uh but so, you know, the, so that camera that I had mentioned would be, you know, um, would be brought in, you know, the video of that camera would be brought in via a, um, a capture device, uh, which is outlined in that video. Okay. Uh, into, into that same laptop you're using. Yeah. And okay. that, and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the capture device that I'm thinking of is this capture device that I have here. And in fact, you're seeing, you know, if I if I unplug this, I go away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a this is an Aver Media GC five fifty three. It's it's also in that Beyond Webcams video. Oh, okay, okay. So Aver Media is all one word, and GC five fifty three. I'll put it in the in the chat. Oh, okay. uh, but it's it's quite simple. Um, you don't need any drivers. You don't need any configuration. Okay. Uh, and again, this is not for everybody. Uh, you know, a church like um, Larry's Church, for example, in Wilbraham United, they're they're kind of beyond what we're what we're talking about here but right. the idea here is you're bringing in a, a video signal on this yeah. side and this connects to the computer on the other okay yeah yeah and okay. you just plug it in mac or pc it'll run okay yeah i have a mac yeah, yeah. so is that plugged in through a usb or through an HDMI? yeah us uh, usb right. yeah us usb c so you okay. you, you have to make sure so it's either USB C or uh, USB 3.0 or 3 uh, 3.1, uh, and you can always tell which one is which because the if you look at the USB port again, this is on the video, uh, you'll have a blue insert. You know the inside of the plug will be blue, which mm -hmm. tells you it's the next you know next generation of uh, USB. Yeah, mine's got oftentimes. Well, oftentimes, mine... if you have a Mac or you're running a Surface, a Microsoft Surface, there's no color coding it's all whatever the case color is so you have to the, the best way to find out is to check your uh, documentation my usb ports on my computer are the real are the small ones they're like the okay. usb 2 or whatever yeah okay, okay. all right well I'll, I'll do that and then i'll uh, yeah and just uh, you know, maybe we can yeah yeah okay thank you yeah no no trouble and that actually takes care of one half of it. And then you have audio, which is the other half of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, which That's is, kind of the problem we ran into is like, we wanted to do the Facebook and we wanted, you know, transition from Zoom to Facebook. And that was the big issue is like, so we ended up buying a like sound system, I guess you would say, like a portable sound system. We ended up using it outside for our outside services during the summer. And that was very useful. Um, and so what we're doing right now is we actually um, contracted a company, ATC, in West Springfield. And um, we got uh, two cameras, one for, or two of them for both in the back, I believe. We have kind of an elevated 
area um, in the back. Um, and we're gonna put the cameras back there and the audio system. But we contracted out with the um, with ATC in West Springfield because I know someone was asking about where you got your equipment from. So I just wanted to chime in with that. The other thing I'm trying to be careful of is every day, you know, you get loads of salespeople calling you wanting to sell you, you know, the next best thing. And um, I'm like, no, not, not today. I'm not interested. I got everything I need because uh, when, once you start talking to them, yeah, the, their whole game is just to sell you stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, if I heard you correctly, Philomena, you said that you would send me a list along um, and some of that, uh, some of those things in the list would be a, would be a uh, contain a black magic equipment. That would be fine. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, because um, yeah. we, we want to live stream and do some other things. Um, and that's why I'm um, building this technology, what I call technology grant. Um, sure line item so if yeah. you know anybody who wants to send money to Wareham, tell them we we take checks will do and to and to give some feedback to Catherine, uh, that's i think that's when my uh system cut out so i moved what i did is i moved the uh, converter i moved the uh, scan converter and uh and um um capture device and if whenever i do that it it, it um it does it's strange things it, it just well, it doesn't do strange things. It completely detaches from my computer. So, Catherine, you mentioned that you're working with ATC. They're really good. Mm -hmm. um, my brother-in-law works there. That's, we had a little connection there, so that's why, right. why we went there. Yep. You know, I uh, Tony Tony is really good to work with. Wayne's really good to work with. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have um, a contingent of people already, like three or four people, myself included. I'm also the CE volunteer director at our church. I'm a little involved in what's going on in our church, but... You know, this is something I feel passionately about and something that I love to do because my regular job, I'm a music teacher, but I'm also the technology coordinator in my building. So I'm in charge of taking care of like 450 kids and mm -hmm. staff and everybody. So it's something I feel comfortable with mm -hmm. and it's something that I feel like I can help with. So I, I try to do my best. But um, yeah, we're really excited. We're hopefully going to get it installed before um, I almost said Thanksgiving. Ugh. It's been a long day. Um, it's called before it's called, Easter. Uh, it's, it's called Corona. <laughs> I, I don't even know what day it is. I just know it's a work day. Like I've gone from like, okay, it's a weekend versus a work day. Because uh, um, I'm a fully remote teacher. So I'm teaching from home five days a week. So it's <laughs> a little crazy. Um, anyway, so we're hoping to get it installed before um, Easter maybe not make our first experience live streaming with this new audio system, the actual Easter service that feels like a little bit of pressure because yep. um, it's one of the two biggest services of the year. So we're hoping maybe a couple before just to kind of get our feet wet and we'll see how it goes. Um, so we're excited, but it's, you know, it's a lot too. But when we ordered, we wanted to think about farther than right now. That's why we, we didn't just go with the bare minimum with what we could have like, Yes, it may have been a little bit more of an expensive um, purchase, but we went ahead and went to like a mid-grade just to mm -hmm. kind of think about the future and say, okay, even when we are back in the in the church, we are going to keep streaming. We are going to offer these services to people who are out in Facebook land and want to see what we can do to expand that. So um, we want to make sure we had the equipment available to be able to do that. That perfect. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Catherine, is it possible to uh, share some of that equipment list that you have? I will. I could. Um, I, I don't have access to the the paperwork right now, but I could ask the person who made the purchase and and see what actually we did order. And Thank you. Uh, yeah, how would I get that to you? That's a good uh, question. You could uh, email it to me. Could you put your email in in the chat here? Uh, Would you feel comfortable doing that? I've not done it before, but. Okay, well, at the bottom of your screen, there should be a little chat bubble. Okay. And it should pull up a little screen and you should be able to type a little message in there. 
Okay, got it. I teach kindergartners how to use Zoom. We, you can do this. I have faith in you. You can do it. <laughs> well, if you if you if you realize what other other uh, uh, aspects of technology that Larry was responsible for throughout his career, you'd be like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I heard his I heard his resume. I was like, wow, yeah, exactly. <laughs> impressive. And you know, and that's and 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 that brings me to a good uh, a point where um, I want to stress that we and let me let me put an I statement on it. I we are always learning all the time, you know. And if you um, so don't feel bad that something uh, you know uh, is new because there is always something new, you know, constantly. So, you know, it's uh it's uh you know, it, technology is ever evolving. Ministry is ever evolving. So. You know, and I think this is, you know, it's a, um, it's a, it's a, you know, I, I, I in, a, in as much as this is a, this has been a, you know, a long haul for some of us, for a lot of us, um, this is a, I think it's a good time to be church, because this digital ministry, I believe, activates um, the, the revisioning of, of what we consider ministry, um, you know, uh, and uh, provides opportunity for, for new growth, you know. So I'm, I'm happy for that. Definitely. So is that uh, visible, Catherine? I don't have it yet. Okay. Uh, so I've typed it in, and how do I get it to you? Oh, just hit enter. Thought I did that. I'm sorry. That's all right. Does anybody else have any questions? I know that, um, Rich, I believe you unmuted for, for a bit. It's odd. Know. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's odd because I don't even see my name on the list of participants here. So maybe it didn't just come to me. So if someone could re send it's, that in the message, that'd be great. I could just give it to you now. It's, okay. it's pretty easy. Larry underscore or the, the underline Harris at charter.net. There you go. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to Philip. So you don't know, Catherine, you are on program. the list. Am I? Because I didn't yeah, see you. I see you. Yep. Yeah, you're on there. I was Maybe I can't send messages to myself. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> uh, I was just going to ask you, the challenge that we have doing church to church members is trying to teach them how to use Zoom. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, Zoom is not uniform in its um, where the buttons are. So yeah, if they're on an face. iPhone or on an iPad or on a computer or on an Android phone, right. it's all over the place. And we struggle with trying to get people to figure out, you know, how do I unmute? How do I turn my video on? How do I... You know, we've gotten to the point now where we send out a Zoom link that has everything in it so they can just click on it and get there. But there, it all starts up with all that stuff turned off for them. Mm -hmm. Well, I will out. tell you that something that has helped us is I've made like little tutorial videos because I do a lot of recording for my little ones. I, I do Zoom recordings all the time. And so I will go into a Zoom meeting and I will share my screen or I will use my webcam and like actually physically turn it around so they can see my iPad or whatever it is and make just like a three minute little screen recorded version of me accessing the meeting. Um, and then we send that link, we make it into a YouTube video and send that link in our group email out to the whole congregation. So if they get email, they definitely could do that. So that seems to be something that worked a little bit for some of our congregants. Now there's some that don't even have email. So mm -hmm. that's a whole another set of uh, problems. Yeah. But we do have a very, um, a couple of people that are very um, good about going to the person's house if they feel comfortable doing that and helping them set up their equipment and get it set up. And we had some older equipment that was donated that we took to people's houses, like old webcams and old um, old, you know, iPads and stuff like that. So people could access stuff that they wanted to. So we really been trying, cause we have a, a you know, 90% of our congregation is, uh, you know, certain of a certain age that is not as technologically savvy as, um, 
you would like, and it makes it very difficult, but we're trying our best to, to reach all of them as best we can. Yeah. Like I said, you know, it's easy to sort of walk somebody through one of the things, but when you've got so many other choices and, you know, we don't all have all of those devices to say, all right, what does it look like to you? Mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes they don't even know what device they have. They just know they're watching you on, a, on something. And, you know, and so it's kind of, and that's been our challenge for people coming on and doing the Zoom meeting with us, you know, is getting them to figure out how to connect and stuff. Because we try at the end of the service to always have what is a coffee time where people can chat and connect, you know, because we're, you know, one of the things we need to figure out how to do in this new media is connect with people. And having a talking head service isn't really necessarily connecting, you know, whereas, you know, sitting in the sanctuary, you, you think that's the same result, but it's not. In the sanctuary, they, it's a much more personal relationship. And we're trying to figure out how to overcome that to become more personal connection. And that's that's going to be a big challenge for us to figure out how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as you had mentioned, you know, expand the server, our, our reach out to the community in more, in more options as opposed to just Sunday morning service you know, figure out how we can do connections, maybe how to do visits, you know, deacons visits, because, you know, a lot of people, you can't visit, but you just can't. Yeah. Right. So you know, we're trying to work that into the thing. And one of that is to overcome the people who are actually doing that. They're not used to being on Zoom. And, and a lot of times they don't even want to be on camera. It is, and, it, and that's it's part of the, their training and saying, look, if we want to reach out in the community and be connected, they have to see you to be connected. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a that's a good point, Rich. I, uh, your uh, your comments remind me of a uh, of a local pastor in Western Massachusetts um, that you know I I don't know how I got on their you know on their uh, Facebook feed, and this was back in back in June or July. But somehow I pulled up this, you know, this church. It's this was a, a South Congregational in Springfield, um, and you know, I just, you know, there came up on my feed that um, you know uh, the pastor, uh, Pastor Lindsay, was on, was live. So I think, uh, and what she was doing is she was doing an impromptu, um, you know, um, connection video uh, with her congregation. I don't know how I got onto it. I'm sure I, you know, liked or clicked on something of hers on Facebook in the past, you know, and uh, was hence, uh, you know, uh, got connected in. But sometimes it's just, you know, and, uh, again, trying to, you know, uh, reinforce the fact, uh, the the uh, the uh, thought that, you know, worship goes and connection goes beyond Sunday morning, which is, you know, uh, right on. Um, you know, for her, I think it, I think she was. Um, I think she was online on, I think it was a Wednesday or Thursday. And she was, you know, she was on her phone live, you know, on the, on a bike path next to the Connecticut river, you know, in, uh, outside of Northampton. So, you know, and it, it was, and it was, it was, it was pretty cool because it was, you know, it was not rehearsed. It was, you know, this is, you know, you know, hello, I'm, you know, this, you know, you know, well, welcome to Wednesday or Thursday or whatever it was. And this is what's on my heart and my mind. And how are you all doing? And she would accept uh, prayer. Uh, she would accept uh, you know, looking for feedback, you know, on uh, through chat. And, and people were, were actively doing that, which is which was kind of cool. You know, so that's the other side of, you know, what we're doing, you know, what we're what we're attempting to do with with technology inside the sanctuary. And that's and, you know, uh, trying to. Uh, trying to um, find our way in the sanctuary with technology uh, is not easy because not every church is the same. You know, every church has different lighting. Every church has a different setup. You know, we may have different, you know, we all have a chancel. We all have, we all have naves, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have Morgans, but, you know, how, where are they positioned? Where are they placed? You know, uh, what's the, what's the personality of the church? You know, so this, these are the things that, you know, that are uh, challenging, you know, a, you know, just as much as, you know, making, you know, the signal go from, you know, from point A to point B, you know, so. Yeah, I think you know, the other thing is, you know, we're trying to watch a bunch of videos, you know, or services of other people, you know, and it just seems like a lot of them, these, 
they don't get close enough. They don't zoom in close enough to the person who's right. speaking. Yeah. You know, so you, you feel very isolated. You need to yep. get people to convince themselves that you need to fill two thirds screen of the person. Exactly. Right. Right. And that's a good point, Rich. And you'll even see that, you know, if you like, if you click on live.summersville UCC, or even if you go to, um, if you go to my, my home church, which is St. Mark's, which is St. Mark's Media on, on YouTube, you'll see it's the same frame. You know, it's kind of, you know, you know what to expect when, you know, when, uh, when uh, we fire up the cameras and, and, and uh, VMAX. Um, you know, and even with the, you know, I know my, I know my husband Graham is always telling his team, okay, zoom in, you know, you got, you have these, you got these, you got this expensive gear, you know, go, you know, go in, you know, and, you know, like you said, uh, Rich, fill, fill the frame. And yeah, I think it's part of the training of, you know, saying, look, the whole purpose of this is to make a connection with people that you're talking to. Right. And so think about how you make connections. Well, connections are closer personal. Philomena, did you have something? Oh, to... I was wondering, because um, I, I use speakers view rather than gallery a mm -hmm. lot uh, yeah. on Sunday morning, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't been doing church from my home. I started, you know, at my dining room table and I thought, I don't want to get out of the practice of having to drive to church. So in one of the Sunday school classrooms, I built an, an, an altar. I started in Advent and then I've changed it and I'm gonna change it again during Lent. And, and I have a pulpit and, and you know, it's um, movable. Mm -hmm. So but, you, scaled, you scaled it to- Right, room. exactly. And speaker's view allows whoever is talking to be you know, front and center on the screen and really close up front. Right, right. And speaker view also allows you, if I can get this to work again, let me see if I can try to, to do this again here to show you what's possible with speaker view as opposed to gallery. So you know what, everything. All right, I, I promise in the next next time we meet together, I will, I will do a run through of what I can do because I can, um, you know, my, everything went a little haywire here. So, um, but I, uh, next time we meet on next Tuesday night, I will, uh, will be able to share with you what I can, you know, I, uh, do, you know, and, and how I incorporate speaker view into, you know, um, into, into, into the, into the, uh, signal flow so that you can, um, you know, uh, do, have different camera angles and go to different sources automatically, um, you know, in, in zoom. So kind of have a, Kind of have a little twist on you know on what yeah. you're accustomed to seeing in Zoom. Be good. I mean, the other thing that people should recognize, if you have two monitors, the presenter can see the gallery, which helps in their feedback. You know, even though you're you know you're broadcasting or linking to Facebook, only the speaker view. At least the speaker, you know, the person who is presenting gets to see another connection that says. Did they, did they understand me when I said something? Right. right. You're getting, you're getting a, you're getting nonverbal cues back. Right. You know, I, I think a lot of people don't recognize, realize that Zoom offers that feature, but you do have to have two monitors to make that happen. Well, that's one thing that I absolutely have to have as a being a teacher, is I have my Zoom on one side because we use Zoom. We're not a Google school but then all of my other stuff is actually on my computer. So that's like integral to be able to see my kiddos while they're actually like in the class and responding to what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something I would um, advise anybody to have if they're using Zoom. Thank you, Catherine. I had a question. Um, one frustration I have seems to be week to week is the sound. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing every week and sometimes they hit, say oh it sounded great other times it's like I can hardly hear you how come it was this way or how come it was that way and I'm like I don't have a clue because I do the same thing every week you mm -hmm. know I, is is it just all internet connections and how uh, I just don't know sometimes it can be um 
you know, I think with Zoom, to uh, at least with, with my experience with Zoom, is I like to take all the variables out of uh, out of sound that I can, mm -hmm. um, and that means having the having these uh, signal source as close to me as I as I can. So that means wearing a wireless mic, like like I was wearing. Um, mm. So, you know, that may be one solution. Okay. One of, the, one of the things that we noticed with Zoom is you have this option to control the volume. And sometimes when you're playing music, it doesn't do a great job. You have to make sure you turn that off. So it isn't right. compressing right. your sound. Because right. it, it really has a long delay from the time it hears a loud noise. It's almost like a second before it'll bring the sound back. Mm. Everybody who's nodding their head has been there. <laughs> <laughs> Any other, any other questions, any other comments? <laughs> Thank you all. It has been wonderful yeah. to be together again uh, for this evening. It was great to meet some new faces. Thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to seeing you again. So uh, if you have any questions in the interim between the next, you know, so the next opportunity to meet on Zoom, um, you know, for in the Tech Deacons Roundtable will be uh, next Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, that is a larger crowd, um, but mm -hmm. it, um, you know, if you have something between then and now, or you know, or the next time we meet uh, at our uh, time at 7 p.m. Uh, two weeks from now, shoot me an email. I'll be mm -hmm. happy to um, to uh, talk with you. Okay. Very good. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Nice and to meet everyone. Yeah. Nice to meet everybody. Okay. All right.